epidurals can provide a level of pain relief that can almost feel magical. But more times than people want to admit, epidurals are kind of a disappointment. Now, I've taken my 19 years of experience and over 300 births as a doula and created a formula that can help set you up for having a great epidural. So if you get an epidural, I want you to have one that manages your pain and helps you reach your goals for birth. So this is really interesting. You can have two people that actually experience really similar things that happen in labor. Uh, they can both have epidurals when they're in active labor. They both have urinary catheters. They both experience the slight drop in blood pressure that happens after you get an epidural. And they can both feel a lot of pressure when it comes to pushing. So these experiences can be so common when it comes to epidurals, but where is the difference here? Where is the difference that one person loves it and the other person does it, doesn't? And what I've seen is that it really boils down to the expectations and a lot of times the education that the person has before they get the epidural. So when you go to a childbirth class and you learn about what epidurals are like, you learn about the common risks and the side effects, you have heard stories about where maybe when someone gets an epidural, their, your blood pressure is lowered and it can be a little tense. When you have heard all of these stories and you know what to expect and you go into birth and you experience things that you have already learned about and that you already expect, you have a much different satisfaction with your epidural because it's expected, right? You came in knowing that that's gonna happen and you got what was gonna happen. So you're not disappointed, you don't feel like you got a bad epidural. On the other hand, if you, if you go into labor wanting an epidural and you don't know anything about the risks, the side effects, the common way that an epidural works, and you just feel like it's gonna be magic because you've heard how magical it can be and then it's gonna take away all the pain, and then you end up having some of these real side effects, a lot of times you feel super disappointed. And um, some people just can't get sort of out of that disappointed mindset in labor because they feel like that they uh, almost were like ripped off, like they didn't get the epidural experience that someone had promised them. So in this formula, the number one piece is for you to find out and learn and go to a childbirth class about how epidurals really work so that you have your expectations set up correctly and you know what to expect and you know what a good epidural looks like and what a normal epidural looks like. And that is absolutely number one in this formula. So have you ever heard about people sleeping after they get an epidural? Now, this really does happen. And if you're wondering, how are you gonna be able to sleep in a hospital bed with your blood pressure cuff on, with the monitors on, with nurses going in and out of the room, and just the excitement of being in labor and meeting your baby soon, let me explain. Two factors that go into being able to sleep with an epidural. The first one is being exhausted. So it is very common that by the time you get an epidural, no matter how much time you've been in labor before that, you are exhausted. And it might just be like a mental and emotional exhaustion, but the exhaustion is really, really, really common. The second key piece to sleeping with the epidural is a step two in this process. And before I share it with you, please promise that you'll share this with your partner because having your partner agree to this step and to help you achieve it really makes it so much easier. So for step two, I want you to do everything in your power to sleep. And this is what it looks like. So putting your phone down, like down away from you. Let your nurse help you get as comfortable as can be, which usually requires like stuffing pillows in different spots between your legs, behind your back. Uh, your partner can set up the room by turning off all the lights, maybe turning on some like super chill music or maybe some white noise, and also getting them set up for sleep so that if you're able to catch a little bit of sleep and they're able to catch, catch a little bit of sleep, 
you're gonna be setting yourself up for success for the active phase coming up, which is the pushing phase. Step three in this formula has to do with the pushing phase. Pushing out your baby is very different from having contractions. Stage one of labor, which is the contraction phase, it's mostly about just enduring contractions. Now the pushing phase, it's about you actively working to birth your baby. And sometimes it takes our brain kind of a minute to switch into this mode, especially if you followed my step two, which was being able to sleep. And what can happen is you're resting, you're sleeping, and your nurse comes in because maybe she sees a pattern on the monitor that gives her an indication that it might be time to push. So she comes into your room, she wakes you up and asks if you feel any pressure. And many people who have an epidural do feel pressure when it's time to push, but some people feel nothing. So this next step is often for your nurse to do a cervical check, see if you're ready to push. And if your cervix is completely dilated, then it might be time to start pushing. Just think about what you're being asked at this stage. I just asked you to try to sleep and do everything possible to sleep. And if you were able to do that, you are now if your cervix is dilated, I'm going to be asked to make a complete shift into active pushing. And it can be a little bit jarring. So this is gonna sound a little bit strange, but stick with me here. Instead of just jumping from resting to pushing, take a few minutes to regroup. So first you'll wanna ask your nurse for a few minutes before you get to start pushing. And in the vast, 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 vast majority of cases, a small delay in pushing is gonna be perfectly fine. If there's a concern where they need you to start pushing immediately and you can't take that five minute break, that's fine, but this is really rare. So what this reset looks like, it's different for different people. Sometimes people want to like try to brush their teeth from their bed, um, brush their hair, put their hair in a ponytail. I've had clients that wanna put on some makeup, change their playlist, maybe from that chill music to something a little bit more powerful or a little more inspiring. What I want you to do is start kind of coming out of that rest mode and getting into that active, powerful mode. And just taking a few minutes to have this reset is really gonna set you up to be able to do your best work pushing. Now partners, they really need to do a reset here too because if they were just like, totally asleep, dead to the world, they're gonna be a little bit foggy and they need to reset. They usually need to have a snack, go to the restroom. They might need to like update your family. They may need to, you know, splash water on their face just to kind of wake up. I really encourage that partners do this, especially the bathroom part. Once you start pushing, it's hard to leave the bedside and run to the bathroom. It's hard to sneak away. Add that music also, the next thing is like, you might wanna turn some lights on, you might want to change up your space a little bit to bring more energy. The goal of this third phase of the process is for you to be able to bring your most powerful self to this pushing phase. Now, have a discussion with your nurse about preferences that you want during this stage as well. You might want to change your position while push, pushing. You might want to change positions. You might want to not be coached, you know, be sensitive to people yelling at you. These are all things that I really recommend that you think about what would make you your best self during pushing. And while we're talking about pushing, I think that pushing is one of the most misunderstood phases of labor, which is why I highly recommend that you check out this video right here. It is like a mini class on pushing, and I know you're gonna like it next. Don't forget to share this three-part epidural process with your partner so that you have the best success, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks, guys. Bye.